All right, got this Black & Decker space heater. When you turn it on, it clicks, but it doesn't actually turn on. The light doesn't turn on. And this is on high, or fan, so none of those settings work. This pressure sensor seems to be the problem, because it's just flopping here and there's no resistance. Like I feel like there used to be, like a spring or something. So I'm guessing this is the problem, but we're gonna take it apart and see. Okay, so it looks like the mechanism, you can't, I don't think you can see it, there's a little black button it looks like right here that's supposed to pop out and push against this and that's how you get resistance. That looks broken. So let me look online to see, this is the Zuna. Zunma, X-U-N-M-A, um, 16 amp, some sort of pressure switch. So I'm gonna look this up and see if this is a cheap piece that I can get, and then we can just fix this on the cheap. I looked on the other side of the piece and actually had a part number, KW3-OZ. When I did a search for it, I found some that look very similar, and they're not too terribly expensive. Um, but with shipping, it ends up being, on almost every instance, over $5. And for a heater that costs maybe 15 on sale, I didn't think it was worth spending $5 on this little switch. So I'm going to try to take it apart and see if I can fix the actual switch itself. All right, the piece is kind of expensive. Just saw that. So we're going to take this apart and see if there's not just something simple to fix in here. Um, and hopefully I can take this apart without ruining it. It looks fairly simple. The plastic was already coming apart. Might be what's causing the problem, actually. Okay. So that's the inner workings of this. And this is the piece right here that's supposed to pop out to give a little resistance against that pressure plate. All right, at this point in the process, I just want to pause the video and point out that the cause of my switch failure was this little copper spring piece here got pushed too far out of place to perform the action it was supposed to uh, at pushing this lever back down against this uh, plunger portion. In order to fix this, you need to pull this out and reset it to where it should go, but unfortunately it requires you to take all of these components out of this little case. Given that my hands were in the way of me putting it back together, it's gonna to be easier to describe it on a whiteboard, which I'll do here shortly. But before we go there, I wanted to call out some of the pieces that you'll need to keep in mind. The first is this straight spade connector that has a little metal conduit here pointing down. You have another spade connector that is pretty ornate in that it makes this full length of the box, takes up this full length of the box here. Then you have a copper piece of metal that acts as the, as the pendulum that gets pushed back up and down with the plunger. And it is held in place with this copper piece of metal that is shaped like a Nike swoosh with a little tail end here that catches behind on this piece of uh, back piece of metal. And then of course you have the spring piece here which is out of place, but it also is shaped slightly like a um, Nike symbol but it is much thinner um, and is distinctly different from this one. So I'm gonna kick you over to the board session so you can see how you put it back together. All right, let's draw this out because it's easier than watching on the film with the small little pieces. Imagine this is the frame of the box here. Let me make it a little bit smaller. And you're gonna to have to put together the components outside the box and slide them in but just for sake of showing orientation, I'm gonna show them in the box itself or the frame itself. First thing you wanna do is get the spade connector piece that has a lot of turns in it. So the one that looks like this. Then what you need is the long straight 
metal piece that's copper in color and it has the little connector pad on it there. It's hollow on the inside here and then there's another little piece of the frame of metal back here. You're going to have to kind of turn it sideways to slide it up on, onto here, but once you get it into place somewhere at the bottom third of this section here, you want to turn it flat so that the top of the piece is facing up and the top of the piece will be the one that has the little uh, pad connector right there. Next you want to get the piece that is shaped like that. It's going to be copper in color and hard. Um, it's not the spring piece. But you'll grab that piece and on the tip of that piece there will be a little point and you want to put the hole or the tip of that point into the hole that exists at this right angle edge here. It's a little bit confusing because there's a hole right here that looks like it would be a good like perfect fit but that actually is not where you want to put it. You ignore that entirely. You want to put the point into the angle here and then the tail of that piece should fall underneath this little piece of metal here so that if and when this goes up or down, this piece will act in kind. So those are little arrows that might have been confusing. But so that, that sits under here. Um, and then the next piece that you'll need to get, and it's the most kind of frustrating point of this whole thing, is the spring. It's sh shaped asymmetrically as well, like a Nike swoosh. And you want to make sure that the hard right angle side is in this orientation going this way. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take this spring and push it into this hole. So you have counter pressure. There'll be a little slot. It will make sense where it goes. And then the, the right angle side will go into a slot here. So you'll need to, to create the pressure push this way to get it to fall into place. And so you need it here in place already so that you have some way to, to bend it when you're pushing in place. So you push this way and then it should slide in place. This is actually the piece that caused the failure in mine. This, I guess, got depressed so much that it slid too far up and then it couldn't act in, as it should have or as tautly as it should in the spring. So you want to make sure that it sits in there nicely and this whole piece or this whole set of pieces should fit together rigidly enough that it exists without you having to hold it all very carefully together but it is somewhat fragile so when you slide this all into place into this little slot in the plastic you just want to be careful but it should be self-contained enough that you can can do it um, without holding all the pieces together simultaneously it should be its own little structure once you get this slid into place you can put the spade connector that has its own little metal pad in so that it's pointing down so that when this gets pushed up they complete the circuit and then you want to put the black plastic plunger into its little slot here and this little black plunger in real life is way closer to this piece here because this is what pushes up and down against this little piece of metal to make this swing back and forth. Oh, don't want to erase the arrow. With the plunger in place, you just need the lever that actually pushes on the plunger, and that's the little uh, right angle piece of metal that's shaped like that. There's going to be a slot in the plastic here, and a slot in the plastic here. This fits in either one, but the, the component only works if you put it into this one that's closer to the front spade bit. Once you have this all together, then you can put the top on and you have the completed um, um, switch. What I would recommend you doing is just mess around with this lever here and push it up and down and make sure that this is acting with some, some bit of rigidity and that it actually, when you let go of the lever, this pushes down on its own. If this does not push down on its own, then you don't have enough tension in the spring and you need to rework how, how you got the tension in there. But once you have that, then it's just a matter of putting it back into the device. We'll get back to the video here now. Once I got the switch put back together, I put the top on and then the screws through the two screw holes uh, tightened snugly into the white posts that were right behind it. Then replaced the spade connectors. In my case, it was a white uh, cord here and a red cord here. Then as I pushed the body together, I made sure that these wires did not interfere with this mechanism or get pressed up against this trigger box in any way. 
and also made sure that they were clear of the fan and the heater elements. Pushed the body together and then screwed the posts or, or these back together all around the unit. All right, one last final check. I have all the screws in as tightly as they go, just to make sure that that didn't disrupt anything. I got it on high. When I lift it up, turns off. Got it on low. I lift it up, turns off. I got it on fan, I lift it up, turns off. So it looks like it's a go.